Welcome. This is James Corbett of The Corbett Report with your eye-opener report for BoilingFrogsPost.com. Last week on this program, we explored the tired old cliché that is the last refuge of a skeptic who cannot refute the evidence of systemic criminality in the halls of governmental power or the bowels of the intelligence agencies. But someone would have talked. As often as this argument is trotted out in other areas of discourse, nowhere is it used quite so often as it is when discussing 9-11. In other words, these conspiracy theory, these conspiracies are supposed to be able to pull off these incredible feats, you know, like bringing the two World Trade Center buildings down through intentional, intentionally planted explosive devices, and fly the planes into the building, and time the collapse at just the right floors where the planes hit and the explosive devices happen to be planted. This is not possible. This is impossible, right? So the you know the desire for that. You know, is is there for sure? It's much like the moon landing, where there were thousands of people involved. Yeah, and, and and yet no one slipped up that it's a that it was fun. right. This is yeah. The other way is, way we know about conspiracies is they come out. I mean, people can't keep their mouth shut. Whatever one thinks of the attempt to equate talk of the moon landing with documentable lies and omissions in the 9/11 Commission report, or the logical fallacy implicit in this argumentum ad ignorantium, there is an even more fundamental flaw in this argument. Namely, it assumes that there have in fact been no 9-11 whistleblowers. On the contrary, there have been literally dozens of whistleblowers from within the intelligence agencies, government, and the private business world who have been utterly ignored by the self-proclaimed skeptics and the corporate and foundation-funded media who realize that this is the biggest Achilles heel of the official 9-11 story. Barry Jennings was the Deputy Director of Emergency Services for the New York City Housing Department. On the morning of 9-11, he rushed to the city's Office of Emergency Management in World Trade Center Building 7 with Corporation Counsel Michael Hess. Discovering the office had been abandoned, they attempted to flee the building, but were stuck in the stairwell after a series of explosions. After finally being rescued by first responders, Jennings claimed that they had to step over dead bodies on their way out. Jennings died on August 19, 2008, under extremely suspicious circumstances, just two days before NIST released its final report on Building 7, concluding the collapse resulted from ordinary office fires. J. Michael Springman served 18 months as the head of the visa section at the U.S. consulate in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia in the late 1980s. He attempted to blow the whistle on a visas for terrorist scheme that was being operated by CIA personnel in the consulate, funneling Afghan Mujahideen into the U.S. for training, facilitated by the CIA on behalf of their asset, Osama bin Laden. After numerous complaints up the chain of command, Springman's contract with the State Department was not renewed. The Jeddah Consulate later went on to issue visas to 15 of the alleged 9-11 hijackers. In August 2001, the Federal Reserve Board of Governors issued a non-routine supervisory letter warning Fed banks to be vigilant in monitoring suspicious activity reports. At the same time, the United States economy was experiencing its largest June to August spike in M1 money supply since 1947, with more than $5 billion being added to the currency in circulation over that period. Piecing this information together at the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago two years later, economist Bill Bergman wondered if the sudden infusion of currency might have been an indicator of foreknowledge of the 9-11 attacks. When Bergman wrote to the Board of Governors to ask for clarification as to why they had issued their supervisory letter, he was told that he had committed an egregious breach of protocol in calling the board staff and asking the question. Of all the 9-11 whistleblowers, however, perhaps the most prominent are among the 9-11 Commission members themselves. Six out of ten of the commissioners have questioned the Commission and its conclusions personally, namely Kane and Hamilton, Kerry, Romer, Lehman, and Cleland. Commission co-chair Lee Hamilton once famously remarked that the Commission was set up to fail. Commission members considered bringing criminal charges against Pentagon officials who had deliberately lied to them about the military's complete lack of response on that day. One of the commissioners, Max Cleland, even resigned because the commission had been deliberately compromised by the President of the United States. Bob Kerry, meanwhile, has cryptically remarked that 9-11 was a 30-year conspiracy, but no mainstream reporter has ever followed up with him to clarify this statement. Because the problem is it's a 30-year-old conspiracy. Yes. No, I'm talking about 9-11. That's what I'm oh, talking about. Oh, you about. are. You mean yeah. this? Yeah. Anyway, I got it.
You've been watching an excerpt of this week's Eye Opener Report. To continue watching the report, please log into BoilingFrogsPost.com. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us.